Hello everyone and welcome to the Gilmore Athon. <laughs> You say hi to. If you don't know, Gilmore Athon is a week-long readathon centered around Gilmore Girls, one of my favorite shows of all time. If you don't know, I'm a huge Gilmore Girls fan. I have multiple videos of it. I've done like my favorite top 10 episodes. I've done reviews on each individual episode for the year in the life, which was not that good. Uh I've done lots of videos on Gilmore Girls. I love it. I did a whole video of my TBR, which I will link up here, but very quickly, I'm gonna share with you what books I'm planning to read. On my TBR is four books. Do I think I'm gonna read four books within a week? No, because I'm still kind of in a reading slump, so this is gonna be interesting. So, the books I'm planning to read are The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston, As Seen the TV by Meredith Shore. This is our group read, and then, also, The Stand-In by Lily Chu, and lastly, Well Traveled by Jen DeLuca. So that's four books. I don't, I think for sure I will read Well Traveled by Jen DeLuca because that's my ebook, and I do read a lot on ebook, especially while putting her down for naps and also putting her down for bed. That's when I get to read a lot on my ebook. Um, physical is still kind of tricky for me, so I think maybe I could read three, and I'm... This one is one that I'm like, if I read it, great. If I don't, it's okay. This one, I really, this is the first one I'm gonna start with because I've just heard amazing things about it. So I'm gonna start with that one. And this one's our group read. So I feel like, you know, I need to read it because it's our group read. But yeah, that's my um, reading plans for this week. I hope that this maybe will kick me out of my slump and I will do better. Here's to hoping. I'm gonna read. I know there's a live stream happening tonight that I won't be able to join right away because I gotta put kids down for bed. But I'm really excited for this this readathon. Oh, it's gonna be a good time. Also, I thought it would be a cool idea to do this thing where since there's seven days in a readathon and there's also seven seasons of Gilmore Girls, I'm not counting a year in a life, I thought for each day of the readathon I would share with you my favorite episode from each season of Gilmore Girls. I wrote them all down, so I thought that would be just a fun thing to do. So today, we're gonna start off with the season that started it all, season one, which still is a really solid season. When I was looking at season one, I was like, ooh, there's, there's a lot of good episodes that I really enjoy, but one that really stood out to me is Kiss and Tell. One is a perfect time to watch it because it's like centered around Thanksgiving. Rory and Lane are kind of participating in like this kind of pilgrims like um, festival where they're dressed up kind of as pilgrims and things like that. And this is the episode where Rory kisses Dean in um, Dozy Supermarket. Oh my God, he kissed me. Who kissed you? The Lord, Mama. Oh, okay then. And it's just a really cute episode. I just really enjoy it because it's the first time also that Rory has not told her mom things and that Lorelai's learning something about her daughter from another mother and she's kind of shocked by it. Also where she gets to meet Dean and it's just a really good episode. We'll talk tomorrow about season two, another great season. Um, I, hmm, I have debates on what seasons are my favorite, which I'll talk about, but yeah. That's just a little quick thing we're gonna do every day just to talk about an episode of Gilmore Girls for each season and I thought it would be fun. So I'll see you when I see you and I'm excited to read and hopefully kick this slump. To the curb. So I thought it'd be fun to share with you some of Autumn's favorite Thanksgiving fall books. I've got a lot out from the library. I borrowed a lot. I bought a few but this is just perfect for anyone that is a parent to a baby or toddler or watches you know just kind of gets that general gist of it. So I thought I would share with you some books that I just love that are perfect for this time of year. One I bought is A Very Thankful Prayer. I've been meaning to buy this for a while. Um, it just is thankful because obviously we're in the season of giving. So it's got great illustrations. It just tells you what it's thankful what everyone's thankful for and it's just a really warm and cozy book which is the theme for all of these um, books, but it's just the illustrations are beautiful. I would highly recommend probably buying this one. I really enjoy it a ton. It's perfect for babies and toddlers. We have another one that is really great. I actually got this for review a couple years ago. Um, it's What is Fall, and it's got really great illustrations in it, and the way it's shaped is just very fun. It's very short and sweet, which is perfect for baby and toddlers because they don't have a great attention span. They can't stay there for chapter books, obviously, but they can stay there for bright illustrations and for kind of quick, um, rhymy type of um, books. And this is a great one to buy as well. One that I got from the library that I love, but my daughter is not quite ready for is Thanksgiving in the Woods. What drew to me to this, obviously, is the illustrations are beautiful, but this is based on a kind of um, 
place in actually upstate New York where like a family hosts this Thanksgiving in the woods and like over 200 neighbors, friends and all of them come. But the illustrations of this one are stunning. I love them. As you can see, it's kind of longer. So I try to read it to her. She's not quite into it yet. So maybe in a couple of years, I will probably buy this one because I enjoy it that much. But it's a beautiful illustrated one all about the Thanksgiving in the woods. Like, look how pretty this is. Like, I could look at this book all day. Then we have a classic that I bought, Be Thankful, Be Giving by Charlie, um, by the Peanuts. I bought this one because both of my kids like Charlie Brown, old school, and I will never not love that. I will always feed them <laughs> because they're great classic ones. This one doesn't have a lot to it. It's just a really cute one. We have a whole slew of library books. Fall by Allie Bisbee. This one's just very short. Talks about fall. Autumn really enjoys it. It's a short and sweet one. Really cute. First Fall, and this is is um, by Eric Carl. If you don't know, he writes Brown Bear, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. This one just talks about fall. I believe this is like a new series by them. Again, from the library. If you were like, I don't have money to buy these books. Me neither. Library is amazing. Trust you me. It's a great way to see what your kid will like. And if they love the book that much, you can buy it. The one I got for review a few years ago is Llama Llama Seasons of Fun. Autumn and Noah both have loved Llama Llama. This one's great because it's one of those push ones, which she really enjoys. Um, and just talks about the seasons. It's a really cute one. My favorite illustrations fall because it goes like this. Like, oh, I don't know if I could do it. He falls into the leaves, if you can see. It's just, it's really, it's a really cute one. Very short and sweet, and it talks about the season, which is a great way to teach your kids. Another library one, Mouse's First Fall. This one's part of a series that I've never heard before. This one talks about shapes and colors with leaves, which is a great um, teaching tool. Again, there is a whole bunch. There's Mouse First Days of School, and there's Mouse First Christmas, so I might have to check those out. Another new one I got um, from the library is Night Night Pumpkin, and it is just stinking adorable it just is like night night trees like night night leaves it's just like I am a sucker for kids books I, I truly truly am um, I don't have a lot of Thanksgiving books for Noah but I have a lot of Christmas ones which I'll share next month but I thought I would just share with you some Thanksgiving ones I got from the library one of her favorites is Biscuit is Thankful it's short it's sweet it's cute I'll definitely have to get more Biscuit books since she really enjoys this one Biscuit's a classic I'm sure a lot of them you've heard of but it's a cute one again Llama Llama they, I get them all from the library usually when it comes to season this is just the Thanksgiving one. You can probably already guess what it's about. And then lastly, one that I got on a whim that she loves is Apple Farmer Annie. She loves this one. And I've learned that there's also a se another book by this author called Sal's Pizza, which I just got from the library I need to pick up. But this one's just about an apple farmer. And Autumn loves this one. So there you have some fun Thanksgiving books that, and fall books that are perfect for toddlers and babies. And I hope you enjoyed this little glimpse into what I kind of read my daughter every day because she loves books. When I say I read all of these multiple times a day, I am not exaggerating. Both of my kids, Noah goes through phases with books, um, but when he was younger... Wednesday. I forgot to vlog yesterday. I apologize. <laughs> I blame children <laughs> because yesterday was election day so because we're out of school so I had Noah and her and it was just a lot so I didn't vlog. But I wanted to update you on my reading plan. So like I told you guys I started with Dead Romantics and I'm on 200. I'm on page 210 which is great. This book has 
340 pages, so I easily can finish it today. It reads very fast. I am really enjoying it, and I'm not surprised at all. So if you don't know about this book, this book is about a character named Florence, who is a ghostwriter for a very popular romance author. Think of Nora Roberts. Like, she name drops a lot of authors in here, like Nora Roberts, Christina Lauren, Casey Miss Quiston, a lot of authors. So she's a ghostwriter for this famous um, romance author, and she has her next book due really soon and the problem is she doesn't believe in love anymore because she suffered a very tumultuous breakup and so what shall a romance author do when she doesn't believe in love anymore? She meets her new editor who is a guy named Ben and he's like you have two days and she's like well crap. She then gets a call that her father passes away which is very sad and so she has to go back to her hometown which is a very small southern hometown that kind of pushed her out pretty much because Florence can see ghosts and so something happened in her town with that and it pushed her out so she's going back home to visit her family who by the way owns a funeral parlor and they run it and you know her dad was kind of the boss of it all and it's all about her grieving that and then you know like I said she could see ghosts and then one day her new editor, the one, um, her new editor, the one that told her like you have two days or otherwise I'm bringing legal involved, shows up. But he's a ghost, so he's dead, and so she's like having to deal with a lot, having to deal with see this ghost that she maybe is starting to have feelings for, which is very odd, while also dealing with the death of her father, which she's still reeling from. And overall, I'm really enjoying it. Romantic vibes between Ben, who's the editor, and Florence are just phenomenal. And it's just a really heartwarming, sweet book that is set in a small town that is very reminiscent of Stars Hollow because everyone knows everybody and that kind of thing. And I love the whole paranormal aspect of Florence being able to see ghosts. That's really cool. So I'm really enjoying it. Like I said, I will probably finish this today. That's my goal. Um, and then as far as my ebook, because I am reading two books at the same time, because that's just going to my jam, I am 22% of the way into Well Traveled by Jen DeLuca. It's okay. I can already tell it's not going to be my favorite of the series. My favorites are the first and third book in that. Um, but if you don't know, this whole series is about a renaissance fair, and there's different characters in each one that kind of follows their love story. This one follows one of the characters that was in the third book and one that's kind of been sprinkled throughout the series that's kind of been an infamous playboy and is in a band like a uh band that they wear kilts and stuff like that and like a scottish band duh <laughs> Um, but it's okay so far. So overall for reading, it's going really good. So moving on to my episodes because I missed yesterday. We're going to do two today. So my favorite episode of season two, of course, is the Brace Bridge Dinner. If you don't know about that, it's a phenomenal episode, especially during the winter time. So to set the stage for this whole episode, the Independence Inn is hosting the Brace Bridge Dinner, like this really big event where they have to be very um historically accurate and cook accurate and dress accurate have servers and everything and it's a huge group coming in and problem is they get snowed in so they're not able to attend and so laura's like hey laura lies like hey we have all the costumes we have the food let's just invite all of our family and friends and so they do and they put on this big show where jackson's kind of lord bracebridge and things like that and it's just a really great one if you are a just shipper you will love this episode I'm still under front of all of but as far as the overall ambiance of it goes, it's a great episode. Definitely my favorite of season two. Perfect winter vibes. Definitely small town vibes. Love it. Season three features my favorite episode of all time in the Gilmore Girls. It will always be my favorite episode, and that is a deep fried Korean Thanksgiving. I love this episode. Lorelai and Rory overextending themselves and going to like four different Thanksgivings, and it shows you all of them. So I believe the first one they go to is <laughs> Um, Lane Kim's who's having a Korean Thanksgiving they have to eat a tofurkey things like that then they go to Sookie's and that is where the best part of the episode lies because all of Jackson's family is there they're deep frying a turkey Jackson, 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 Jackson. did someone say Jackson laughing laughing good it is my favorite episode of all time of Gilmore Girls hands down well always be my favorite. Hello, it is Thursday. I'm um, sorry, it is dark now because you know it's dark at 5 30 now which is oh so depressing. I have an update for you. I okay I have finished The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston and dare I say this I'm gonna give this a five out of five so 
yeah, I just really enjoyed it. It fits all of the boxes for me. Um, small town vibes, check. Like if you like Stars Hollow, you can check this. The romance was so good. Was so beautiful. It wasn't very steamy or overly steamy. So in case that you're worried about, I would still check it out. But it was just so much yearning because obviously she's falling in love with a ghost. So not much can happen. But it, it was just a beautiful, eloquent romance that I loved. And the ending was just like chef's kiss. I loved it. The family dynamics was great. It talks about grief. As, as you know, the main character's father dies. And they everybody handles grief differently. And she talks to her siblings about it. And it's just overall a beautiful love story with a lot of great other elements into it so yes it's a romance but it's got great family things it's got um small town vibes it's got a paranormal aspect to it because she can see ghosts loved it five out of five it is worth the hype because this book has been hyped so i've been waiting to read it for this particular readathon and i'm glad i did because i loved it five out of five like definitely will be on my favorites list by the end of the year so i have now moved on to our buddy read as seen on TV. I am a whopping 10 pages in, so go me. Um, I can tell I probably won't like this as much, and I can also tell that it's very heavily inspired by Gilmore Girls, because not even in the first 10 pages, she mentions, she mentions the Stars Hollow Gazette twice. I do want to share with you some books I have acquired, so, um, and some tips and tricks. I went to Target. Target was having a buy two, get one free for, um, their books which is a great deal number one but what's even greater is target as price match a lot of stores do and i highly recommend you do that so the first book i got is the classic how the grinch stole christmas why i don't own this yet i don't know my son loves dr seuss he went through a big dr seuss phase and yeah i was like i don't why do i not have the grinch if you go in store in store this is like 17 dollars for a kid's book that's insane online it's seven dollars so you bet your bottom dollar i price checked all you have to do is just tell the cashier be like hey and pull up your app like this is the actual price online and there you go so if you see this in the store and you're like i want to buy it but i want to spend 17 dollars and neither do i so um, yeah, seven dollars, which is a pretty good price for a big old Dr. Seuss book. But if you know the grocery stole Christmas, you know it. Um, and then the other one I bought him was a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving because I have every other Charlie Brown holiday book, but not the Thanksgiving one. Again, this was in store I think for ten dollars, and online it was for six dollars. So that's still four dollars. That's a saving. So yeah, I bought him these two books. So there's that and then i bought myself a book because i just had to <laughs> and that is um maggie moves on by lucy score i originally got this from the library i never read it but i thought i would buy it because i've heard a lot of good things about it so yeah i think this was technically one of them was my free ones that's how i justified it so there's that <laughs> and then i got a book in the mail today from berkeley and that is the paperback version of low to love you if you don't know by ali hazelwood if you don't know she released um this past year a collection of novellas um one of them yeah the she calls it the stemicist um novella collection um including under one roof stuck with you and below zero so it's three short stories and they put it in a paperback version which is awesome i was able to read them all i love them all love how they put it all in one book so that way you can binge them all at once so that is awesome so thank you berkeley for that um and i think that's that's it oh i did get a book from the library not today, yesterday. Pizza at Sally's. If you don't know, Autumn loves this book called Apple Farmer Annie, and I found that that one is written by the same author, and she really enjoys the illustrations, how they're a mixture of real pictures and, like, kind of cartoonish ones. I don't know, but she likes it, so <sighs> that's, the only, that's my update for now. So for season four, which is actually might be my favorite season, I have the Lorelai's first day at Yale. It's literally the episode title. It's about Rory going to Yale for the first time and her unpacking, her learning that Paris is her roommate, and her being away from Lorelai for the first time ever. And I think it's just a great kickoff to an amazing season. Go! Unpack! Copper boom! Copper boom! It's probably one of my favorite seasons because it is literally the only season where Rory doesn't have a boyfriend. Coincidence? I think not. That should probably show you how I feel. Anyway, this is a great season. Love this episode. Definitely one of my favorite episodes. Fits in my top 10 easily.
delicious dessert that is oh so easy. All you literally need is apple pie filling and cinnamon rolls, also ice cream. But all you do, put the apples on the bottom of a baking pan, like the apple-free apple filling, and then put the cinnamon rolls on top, break them up of course, and then you just bake it in the oven like what you do for cinnamon rolls. And comes this delicious, yummy, awesome thing. You also put the frosting and the cinnamon rolls on it and there you have it. It is the most easy delicious dessert I've ever had. Put some ice cream in it and trust me you will be having this like a lot this winter. So for my favorite season 5 episode of course I'm gonna have to go with You Jump I Jump Jack. This is the first glimpse into the Life and Death Brigade which is kind of like a secret society in Yale. Rory is working as a journalist or a writer for the Yale newspaper and she wants to learn more about Logan. So this really gets a kind of glimpse into Logan and, you know, his life. And of course, it introduces us to the classic saying, Inomnia. Inomnia Paratus. Inomnia Paratus. And yeah, it's just a great episode. It's very fun. It shows Life and Death Brigade. And it's just a really aesthetically pleasing one as well, for sure. One of my favorite episodes of the show. Hello, it is Saturday and I have some updates for you. First of all, if you made it to our like reading sprint live show last night, thank you. It was a lot of fun. We did like two reading sprints and then we did some games. We did like a quote game and then a trivia game and it was just a really good time. I'm very tired, but it was worth it. Um, I do want to update you with the reading sprints last night and I was able to read some today. I did finish our group read as seen on TV and I didn't like it. <laughs> so, oh, I would honestly probably give it a 2 out of 5. I know, it's, uh, I don't want to hear that about a group read especially. It's not that good to say. But I just, overall, it just, there wasn't a lot to it really. It's about a character, like I told you, that like wants to go to like a small town to see if small town romance is real. And the small town she goes to, Pleasant Hollow, aka Stars Hollow, is like not what she expected at all. Everyone's grumpy, no one talks to each other. And that's about it. There's a lot of interest in it. Wasn't feeling it, wasn't feeling the chemistry. It just wasn't a lot about anything. It was a big letdown, I'll say that. Even the small town feel of it wasn't even that small town, which I've read a number of small town books. I have a video coming soon of small town reads. So, ah, uh, just didn't enjoy it. Sad to say. Yeah, I don't know. The reviews on this have not been the best on Goodreads, so I'm like not surprised, but I was hoping. But there you go. Um, so I far I finished two books, which is really good for me this week um, because I have been in a slump ever since October and I'm still kind of in it. Like I don't know if it's just the end of the year thing where I don't feel like reading because I'm doing a lot of things. I don't know. But I am 50% of the way traveled by Jen DeLuca. Um, yeah, pretty close to 50%. I'm liking it. I can see it's going to be a three star. It's definitely not one of my favorites by this author. I also feel like the romance that's coming, it's still not quite there, but you can tell that it's being set up. I'm not a huge fan of, like I don't like the characters that, I like our main character Lulu, but the other guy I'm not the biggest fan of. So I don't know. This week, I mean, I did read The Dead Romantics, which has been my favorite of the week. So I think these three are all I'm going to read and then I'll start the stand-in at the end of this readathon. But yeah, it's been an overall good week for reading. Just, you know, this was a letdown. I'm not gonna lie to you. Anyway, I'm gonna go because I have, we have a couple of friends coming over and their son. Workers were doing like a little Friendsgiving. I'm cooking a turkey, like a smallish one, and then sweet potatoes and mashed potatoes, and she's bringing a couple dishes. And it's just gonna be like a little Friendsgiving. It's gonna be fun. And yeah, I'm excited. Um, I'll update you probably tomorrow. Tomorrow's the last day of the readathon. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. But here we are. Also, we're gonna talk about season six of my favorite episode. And it's no secret that season six and season seven are not my favorite episodes, seasons of Gilmore Girls. I just I don't like them that much. There I said it. In case you ever wondered what it's like living with eight pine trees in your backyard, this is it just like pine needles, pine straw everywhere. I have raked this up about five times now. Like it's just, and if it's a windy day, there's no point. Like I've just, I've given up. So living with seven pine trees in your backyard, zero out of 10, wouldn't recommend. All right, folks, here's where things start to look dicey. Season six and season seven. I do not enjoy these seasons. They're not my favorite. So it was hard to pick an episode because I really don't like a lot of them, but Season 6, episode 13, Friday Night's Alright for Fighting. 
this episode wins for an amazing one because of the opening scene of them going to Friday night dinner for the first time all together in a long time and starts a tremendous fight. Your granddaughter moved out. I tried to timeshare a plane. It is in no way even close to the same thing. Oh, I've never been so happy to see a salad in my entire life. They just really hash it out, all these pent up feelings. It is phenomenal. Also in this, we have a great scene of Paris being a little bit over fried as the editor and Rory kind of steps in and saves the day. Logan's there. It's a decent episode. Like I said, season six and season seven are not my favorites. I'll say that time and time again and I'll stand by it. But if you're looking for a good one in season six, this is one. The good marathon is officially over. I didn't really vlog yesterday because this one's sick and this one's getting sick. So uh, where I live, it, it's going rampant. I'm sure a lot of places where Kids are getting sick. Um, I mean, this year alone, well not this year, this school year alone, <laughs> Noah's brought home a bad cold. He brought a stomach bug he shared with all of us and another cold. And now I had to take her to the doctor today because I was like, maybe she has an ear infection, but she has croup, which is not good, but it's very easily treatable at home and she's feeling a lot better. But anyway, that's why I vlog. So I'm gonna wrap this up quickly. I read three books, so yay, um, what I thought I was gonna do. So I'm very happy about that. Before I wrap up all the books that I read for the Gilmarathon, I want to talk about the last season, season seven, not my favorite season. In fact, when I rewatch the show, more than likely not, I skip season seven altogether. That's how much I don't like it. But we have to talk about an episode low. I picked Hey Male Bays because it's, it's a good one. I'm not going to lie to you. I do like the whole aspect of the town doing this hay bale maze. And then at the center of it, Lorelai's looking to try to find a way out. And she runs, of course, into Luke. And they have a great interaction, which I adore. You know, things just don't stand still. They're always changing. Yeah. I guess I was uh, compartmentalizing, if that's what you call it. I mean, I should. It's just a great scene to see them talk again. And I just love seeing the town filled with hay pretty much in this huge maze that overtakes like the whole town square and kind of the middle of the town. Also in this episode, Logan finally visits Stars Hollow for the first time, which I liked a lot, honestly. I do like Logan, dare I say it? Is he my favorite? I don't know, but season seven, there we go. The season I don't love, a lot of us don't. Book I read, which was for sure my favorite, The Dead Romantics by Ashley Possum. He gave it a five, a five out of five. Would highly, highly recommend the readathon. And then we have As Seen on TV by Meredith Shore. Two out of five, very disappointed in this one. Did not enjoy it. And then I finally finished Well Traveled by Jen DeLuca. I would probably get like a two and a half, three out of five. Again, it was just really boring. Nothing really happened. I wasn't overly invested in a lot of interest. And I don't think I even told you guys what it was about. It's about like this series where this author writes a lot of Renaissance fairs. And this particular book we follow a character named Lulu, who is the cousin of the main character in our last book. Um, I forget his name. <laughs> <laughs> but she's like a big shot lawyer and basically she quits her job one day because she's like I'm tired of this and so she um, starts like traveling with this the dueling kilts which is like an Irish kind of band in the Renaissance Fair um, and they're like manager who is Daniel and his girlfriend Stacy which were they were the main characters in the second book which is my least favorite easily in the series and it's all about her and then she connects with the main character um Dex who is kind of a ladies man and a playboy and overall I just wasn't great I like Lulu as a character but again I just felt the chemistry was not really there I just didn't love it as much so overall three books is really good for me but I only really loved one. The other two were just kind of meh, so that's kind of a fail, but I did find one of my favorites of the year, so I'll count that as a success. Either way, this was a very fun time. I loved it. I love doing the reading sprints. I didn't think I was into sprints, but with a new format with YouTube, with um, like have an, ASR, an ASMR room and like a countdown, I really enjoy them. So I'm very too happy you've done it. I hopefully will see you next year with this readathon. Um, but yeah, I have another readathon next month. Tis the seasonathon, which is my own readathon, which is going to be a lot more chill than this one. But nevertheless, I had such a good time. Thank you so much to Olivia, Mackenzie, and Desi. It was such a fun time. I hope you guys enjoyed and hope you get to you enjoyed my favorite episodes throughout the seasons of Gilmore Girls. And yeah, just my love still stands for the show and always will. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.